Hello the internet. My name's Lara and welcome back to my channel. Today, as maybe you can see, begonias. I have finally gotten all my little pots. I took my pots that I had gotten at the thrift store recently and I put my holes in them. And so now some of these guys that are just kind of outgrowing their pots um, are gonna be going into larger pots. Um, and there's enough of them happening that I figured I might as well film it so that you guys can see and I can chat for a little while. Um, about stuff I guess I don't know I'm not very good at chatting what like, I'm good at that's not true I'm good at filling space but I don't generally very much talk about anything other than what I'm doing I don't know if that's a skill I should have but either way um so probably I have filled up my tray a little bit too much um for me to actually do anything. So I'm gonna have to shuffle some stuff around, but that's fine. What do I wanna start with? This guy, this guy, my beautiful with Lacuche has been getting, I mean like absolutely huge and gorgeous and beautiful and everything. And I think this is the one that I, I want to pot up the most. Cause number one, I had to stick it in, in this little thing here because um, it was falling over because it just got so heavy. And so I definitely, none of these other ones are just falling over randomly. Not anymore, that's true. The, um, these are thornish, which I also want to repot, was falling over for a while until I put it into adorable giraffe planter. Um, so this one will probably be number two. Um, I'm still trying to figure out all what pots I'm going to put them in. The pot size that a lot of them are in is actually basically this, only this is deeper. Um, and then some of them are slightly bigger than that, and they're probably going to go in this guy. So, um, I can't put that there. <laughs> I was going to set this down on top of my soil container, the soil that I am I am going to be using in order to repot these, and that just won't work because if I can't get to the soil, then um, this whole potting thing just can't happen. <laughs> okay, so we've cleaned a bunch of this off, moving stuff. I know I should have done this before I started the video, but that's okay. You guys don't care. The only concern I have with these is that um, I'm not sure that I have saucers to catch the water coming out of them. Because, you know, when they're just normal, when they're just normal pot size, then they fit into the little containers, like the little drip trays that I, or the, the little, these things. <sighs> Example, these guys, whatever these are called. I know I know the name of them, I can't think of it right now. Um, but with the size of this, I would need like an eight inch or something really huge. So I haven't figured out exactly what I'm gonna do with that yet, but that's okay. All right, um, I guess we can lower this so that you guys can see what's going on. La la la. Okay. So we're going to be filling this up with soil and then sticking that guy in it. So. Soil. Um, this is, if I remember correctly, my coconut core, um, perlite, 
It has some miracle Grow potting mix in it. Um, and that might be it. So this is, this is, um, not like a super, I mean, none of my stuff is really super fancy. So anyway, my with La Couche. Couche, it might be Couche. I don't know, what do you guys think? With La Couche, with La Couche. Um, and I've had this in this, this which has been holding it up and it, it has some water in it. And so the roots have been growing out the bottom of there and they're just like, please, please let me out. Um, so it's another one of the reasons why I really need to get this guy out of here and hopefully I don't damage these roots too much. Oh no, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Okay, so looking, roots are looking pretty good on there. I'm gonna stick you down into here, like that. That sits in there real nice. Okay, and then obviously we need to backfill it a little bit. Um, and I'm always gonna, oh, yeah, I can dump that up there. Ha! And my adorable little cup for. Um, so anyway, I have been, I don't know, I don't want to say neglecting my plants because I've definitely been keeping them alive, but I've definitely, like winter is, winter is really rough. Like I've said before, Last year, um, I didn't really have that many plants over the winter and a lot of them were succulents. And so, like, it didn't really bother me winter. And now I've got all these plants where, oh, I've got to hold this up, where they're drying out. Both the soil is drying out because I'm not getting to them fast enough. And, um, and because the air is so dry, I'm having trouble with some of them just crisping. Um, and it's just, it's just been really annoying because, you know, I prefer for my plants to just kind of be okay, you know, at least for the most part. And that actually works pretty well. I like that. Um, now we'll see where the soil goes when I water it, but uh, need a tray. I'm gonna use this guy for now. I mean, that's a that's a nice tray to catch the water. Only it like covers a lot of the pot, so I don't think I'd want to keep it in there. I don't have any water. Perfect. Way to plan, Laura. That's okay. We're gonna go fill this up. I'll be right back. Okay, we got water. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Yeah. All right. All the soil needs to just settle down into there, like it's supposed to. Come out the bottom. I don't think it's coming out the bottom yet. soil that the, the, with Lacucci was in, now I'm saying with Lacucci, um, was uh, very, very dry. There we go. Now it's starting to come out the bottom. Um, so it, um, it's probably like forcing water into there because, yeah. All right. So there we go. And my fingers are all I swear, I have a million rags down here, and I don't keep any of them over here in order to wipe stuff off. That's just silly, Laura. Why do you not have stuff over here? Hold on. All right. 
Okay, so there we go. Isn't that lovely? That, that's kind of pretty. I am a fan of that. And yeah, I didn't end up fixing any of the, the chips or whatever. I've decided I'm just going to kind of let that be. You know, let that be, right? They're just, they're chips. They're beautiful. Ugh. Okay, so there. That's over there now. All right, I said that. I said the Deja Thornis also needed to be um, repotted. And I think, I think I'm going to stick this, what many of these do I have? I have, I should have three of those cups. Oh, okay, I already put the other two in there. I think these guys I'm going to go ahead and put in here for now. It's not any wider, um, but it is deeper, which lets the roots, obviously lets the roots go deeper, and sometimes just that root expansion is all the plant needs. Um, because this plant's actually been doing pretty well in here, as long as I keep up with the watering. Um, so I don't really feel like it needs... <coughs> Ooh, pardon me. I don't feel like it really needs, like, a ton more space. It just needs a little bit more space. So we're going to do that. And about how deep does that go in there? I'm trying to figure out how much soil I want to put in. And it's also a little wider in these little, like, where it kind of out. It's really just the top that is the same size as the pot that it's in already. Okay, so it occurs to me that I want to be able to fill up those side spots with dirt before the plant goes in there because it's going to be really hard to push soil down in there around the plant. I don't know. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, beautiful. Uh, okay, that's definitely, definitely too much dirt in the bottom there. here for a minute. I don't want it to be sitting up too high. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So basically the way that ended up sitting in there is that the dirt is basically the exact size of the, the container up here. There's just more dirt down here and more dirt on the sides here, which might pr present an interesting challenge for when I want to um, get it out of there, but I think it'll be okay. I know you are eventually going to need to be repotted completely into something much bigger. But for right now, you're doing good. And I'm putting a little bit of this dirt on top just to kind of go down. It really is like the exact size, though. So. So, okay, I don't want that too high because then when I try and pour water in it, it will all go everywhere. And that's just never any fun. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, I do have to do this in small little sips so that it doesn't overflow, but soaking in there pretty fast so which it usually does because I have very good soil I mean I guess that's part of the point isn't it have the good soil okay now it's dripping out the bottom oh if it just got brighter my one grow light turned on I'm actually down here pretty early this morning I was worried because I didn't get down here at all yesterday and like I said I've been having some problems with plants being underwatered and and my um, humidifiers need refilling like every day um oh these little tags go back in there and so i've just been i was like oh my gosh what if all my plants are dying while i was in bed this morning on a saturday <laughs> and so i hopped up 
And I was like, okay, I'm going downstairs. And then when I was like, all right, I really need to repot these. I was like, Laura, just make that a video because you don't really have any other ideas now. And it, you know, it's a early in the morning, but I mean, what else are you gonna do, right? Okay, so. There, now I have uh, now I have a nice cloth to wipe off my hands. Okay, so I've got that. Um, the other one, this is my Madame O'Reilly, which has been, it's been, we've been through a couple of growing pains together. Um, when I first got it, it was really, I think I was underwatering it a little bit. And so a lot of the leaves cr were crisping and I was worried I was gonna have to put it under, um, like in my grow tent. And now everything's coming in really nice, um, but all of the leaves aren't coming in super dark. Like, you know, these are the leaves that it originally had and then all these green leaves started coming in. And I was like, okay, maybe they eventually darken, but then I've got, now I've got these leaves coming in that are dark. So I'm wondering if it isn't some sort of a light issue. Um, or it wasn't getting enough light, and so these leaves just weren't coming in dark. And then I, it started, I started getting it enough light, and so now the leaves are coming in like the actual color that I would expect. I don't know. I think it's kind of pretty even with all the different colors. So, you know, I, I guess I really can't complain much about that. I mean, I could, but there's not much point. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the same thing. This is going to be the same as the... Last one, we're just putting some dirt down in the bottom and on the sides. Um, so that it has some stuff to grow into. And then it's just gonna kind of be in like that for a while. Until we get to the point where I'm having trouble keeping it watered. That's generally how I go about my repotting is um, because you, again it's just kind of like a feel thing right you're like okay it generally takes a weekish or whatever for my plant to run out of water and need to be watered and then you start noticing wow I feel like I just watered this um, and it's already out of water, you know, and then you're like, okay, well, that generally means, that generally means that you want to, ooh, nice, um, give it a larger pot because it means that all the roots are, you know, you're watering it, the roots are grabbing all the, the, the water that they want and feeding it to the plant and then running out because there's just not enough soil to hold enough water, right? Because um, like I've s I said in my um, soil video, one of the purposes of soil is to hold water for, um, to hold water for the plant. Not too much water, obviously, which is in the case you get root rot, um, but enough, enough water that the plant can do well. Um, so if your plant uh, is drying out too fast, then it generally means there's not enough. You're either not watering it because I mean, it could be that you just only water, you know, once every three weeks or something like that. I don't know. Uh, in that case, it's your watering schedule. But if you water fairly regularly and your plant is drying out a lot more quickly than it normally does, then that is, it needs to be up potted so that there's more soil for the roots to feed into the larger plant. But that's also the reason why you don't want to um, go up too big of sizes. Like everybody always says only go up one size pot, like whenever you up pot. And that is because if you put it in there um, and there's too much water in the soil, because there's not enough roots to suck it all up in a timely manner, that's when you get root rot. So if you control your watering, if you put a, a tiny, like if I put this in like a 10 inch pot, I could do that. 
I would just have to be very, very careful about how much water I gave to it, right? Um, you know, it's possible. It's not that you can't put a small uh, plant into a really, really large pot. It's that you have to control how much water your plant is getting so that it doesn't dry out and it doesn't get root rot. So, all right, so there's our Madame O'Reilly. I didn't really show off the Days of Thornis, did I? You know what, I didn't even think, I because these cups are all, um, like, all different colors. I actually didn't consider which, which color should have gone with which <laughs> plant. I mean, that looks really nice. That one doesn't look bad. I almost think the blue would have gone better with the Days of Thornis. But blue is my favorite color, so. All right, so there, that goes over there. All right, and I know blue is my favorite color and it's very hard to find plants in blue. It does not happen very often. Okay, so this guy, some of these leaves are getting a little like yellow at the bottom. And these are the older leaves. So like when the, I've forgotten what this plant is called. It's got butt in it. Betty Tochiba. Um, <laughs> I know Kenyon, that one's for you. Um, when the Betty Tochiba first comes out, the leaves are actually very like maple shaped, like this. And then as it grows up bigger, they start getting the dividing like this. So these are obviously the more mature leaves and these ones down here are the less mature leaves. And so what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is just chop them off because number one, they're getting a little yellow and number two, they're not, they're not really the shape that's indicative of a Benny Tochiba. Um, and so I'm just gonna get rid of them. <laughs> I mean, that's really just, that's just really how it is. And you know what, as long as you don't take too many off, you know, you can always trim ugly leaves off of your plant because they're your plant, right? You just want to be considerate that you don't chop off too many at a time because you can shock the plant if suddenly it's not getting as much, um, as much light as before because there's fewer plant, there's fewer leaves in order to get the plant that life. Um, so I'm just taking off a couple, just trimming up the bottom a little bit like that. And, uh, then we're going to pop that in there. So these can go over there. Toss. All right. I, re I did get this plant kind of on a whim because I didn't think I was ever going to get the pink mink. And um, I'm really glad that I did get it because it's really kind of a nice plant. It's just really lovely. And it's really easy to... I'm definitely starting to notice now that I'm into the winter um, the like which plants are easier to take care of than others. Like my Etna does fine in the lower humidity, only she's a little drama queen. And if I don't water her often enough, like if I let her dry out too much, she just crisps really, really fast. Um, whereas other plants like this Betty Tochiba um, will, uh, it'll go limp. It's like the very dramatic, I go limp, and then I water it, and it, it plumps back up. The same thing, the Madame O'Reilly does that, the Deja Thornis does that. Um, and I just, I mean, I appreciate that, because, you know, if I'm going to underwater you, I don't want that to mean that you suddenly don't have, um, you suddenly, cr all your leaves crisp. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't get to you, please don't die, don't look ugly. Um, but you know, that's part of, part of planting, plant parenting, is that you, um, 
you know, you find out what plants need what. All right, that's looking pretty nice before I water it. I kind of like that. Yeah, this one actually has a different pattern than the other two. This one's kind of a, a swooshy pattern. Okay. I'm really glad I found these pots. They're really just nice. Um, and, it, you know, it's one of those things, like, I mean, you go to a thrift store and you can just, you can find some really cool stuff at thrift stores sometimes. Um... And I was really happy when I found these. I mean, like, I was really happy when I found these. They're just so, that's great. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna enjoy having these as pods. For the amount of time that these guys are gonna be in here, because like I said, there's not a ton of growing room in here for these. Um, but truthfully, I just wanted my begonias in these, even if it's not, you know, even if it's not huge, that's okay. Now I've got all these, like, extra pots. So, um, okay, so we did all of those. Um, what else are they repotting? I've got the winter twilight. Was that the only other one I had to repot? That's not true. Really? Okay, maybe that is the only other one. Okay, so winter twilight. This has been really, this has been growing really interesting. Ever since I put it under the new grow light, the new leaves have been coming in and being like super, super pink. Um, and these are the younger leaves. They come in on the winter twilight. They come in super pink like this and then eventually they fade. Like, see that one's kind of pink. Um, this one over here has got more pink and then eventually they turn silver like this. And um, got a little... Did I underwater you, darling? Yeah, got a little baby, baby leaf that didn't make it. Okay. Um, but anyway, so this guy is also growing roots out the bottom. Also probably because I have it in this and that's holding some water, but we're gonna go ahead and put that, I don't know, do I wanna put it in here? All right, so that. Or I could also put it in the blue one. It's a little, the blue one's a little shallower. I feel like the color just pops more. I kind of want to put it in the blue one. I'm going to put it in the blue one, guys. I know, I'm going to have to... Um... No, I really want to put it in the blue one. I'm allowed to do this. It's a plant pair and I'm allowed to say I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to take some of the um, bottom of the, the the roots off though in order to make it fit in here because the soil is actually above the, the lip of the plant. No, don't do that. Don't do that to the plant. We'll find something else to go in there. Yeah, that's, that's just better because it's deeper. Way too high. <laughs> way too high. I know that one way that you can do this is you actually, um, you actually put, set the pot in there and then fill the soil in around it. And then when you take the pot out, like all the soil is already around it and then it just goes right in there. But I feel like that doesn't help with, um, how much it needs underneath of it. But you still have to figure that part out. All right. Ooh. Okay, yeah, that one, yeah, that one definitely has got a lot of roots going on, so it probably is a better idea than I'm putting it in this bigger pot. Even though I wanted the blue, we also want our plants to be healthy and in pot sizes that are as appropriate for them as possible. So, that's okay. 
it's going to be it's going to be wonderful either way because I love all of these pots. I'm kind of glad that I had all this. I'm definitely one who likes to make soil ahead of time. I mean, it definitely means that I can't necessarily cater the soil as much to the plant. Um, though this is basically the plant or the soil that I would have made for this plant anyway. Um, I don't do a ton of different soils, so. Have you, ever, have you guys ever gone and looked at, like, um, places that sell soil online and they just, they're like, they have like a million different mixtures. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, like, there's a, a to a certain extent, you need to cater your soil to your plant. I mean, that's just, you know, that's the point. But like all of those different soils, I just feel like is, I don't know, do you not have better stuff to do with your time? I guess they don't because they're selling soil. So they want you to think that you need like, they want you to think that you need all those different soils when really you probably just need one of those soils that is the best suited to your area. Um, or your living situation, your plant situation. Are you coming out the bottom yet? I know, this is the problem with the already being water in there. Yeah, that's how it's coming out the bottom already. Okay, perfect. Okay. There we are, kind of not hard to get it all into frame there. We got that in its new pot too, beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that that is almost all the plants that I was planning on repotting today. Oh, I've got a couple that need to be watered though. <laughs> My beautiful, um, oh, do I even have it over here? I was going to say my, my um, carnivorous plants have run out of water in their little dish. They're still fine because the water or the, the soil is still wet. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Because I'm looking at it, I've got new traps coming in on the Venus flytrap, which is cool. I guess that's just because it's inside. None of my carnivorous plants are going dormant because they're not outside. They don't really see that it is um, the winter time. Anything else? I want to repot. Oh, actually, I was thinking about repotting this guy just because it's in such a tiny pot. <laughs> Have I pulled this out to look at the roots? Oh, oh, look at that soil. Ew, ew. Okay, <laughs> we have to repot that little baby because that soil is just nasty. Um, all right, so let's move this guy down here. I feel like these pots are going to be too big, though. I feel like that pot's going to be too big. You think that pot's going to be too big? I think that's, that's more than one size up. Oh, I wonder if... Um, the problem with this, of course, is that it's just so deep. But I don't think that'll be a problem for a peperomia. I'm going to put it into one of these. I've got so many of these now, I might as well use them. Um, okay. Uh, peperomia, peperomia. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and use the soil. All right, but I am. Uh, I, don't, I don't like this soil. I don't want to mess you up too much, but I just... I know. I'm sorry. I'm probably messing with your roots more than I really should, but this is the same soil that my um, those two little succulents that I got when I was at Strange's came in. It's got like, they look like, to me, as a person who works in a horse barn, it looks like oat, oat husks. 
like, um, so you have oats, and then it's just a whole bunch of layers. And we crush them for the horses because it helps them um, get more tr nutrition out of them when they're crushed because um, the inside, of course, is the part that has the most nutrition. And the outer shell then falls off. Um, and that's what this looks like. And I'm just, I don't even understand. I don't even understand putting that in there. I don't understand putting that in there. That's so weird. But anyway, I don't like that soil. So I'm not going to keep that soil. And you're going to go into my soil. And your little roots are going to grow out into my soil. That is wonderful and beautiful. And that's too deep. <laughs> Yuck, 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 go away. Go away. And of course, the plant's been doing fine. Like, I haven't been having any problems with this one at all. I think it's just gotten to the point now where it needs more space. Um, just because it's filled up the pot so thoroughly and it feels like it's, oop, fell, falling over. It feels like it's falling over. Um, it feels like it is, it stopped growing quite as much. And of course that could be winter also, but like I said, a lot of these plants don't really know that it's winter because I have them inside under grow lights. And so I'm just worried that it is um, just a lack of space, a lack of good soil, a lack of nutrients, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's about time to take these little side leaves off though. They're really pretty, um, but obviously the plant's been getting better light and that's why the leaves are so much more compact and so much more colorful. Um, I guess it also could be adult leaves, but it literally started growing those type of leaves as soon as I got it home. Um, because like I said, I think, it's a, I think it's a light thing, so. Okay, we have backfilled. <laughs> And I mean, that just, it looks weird because it's got all those like leaves that are way out there and not these ones. So we'll see. This on the other hand, will have a little tray. Because it is in a pot that still fits in a tray. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not gonna overwater you because you actually weren't at the point where you really needed water. We're just watering you in. So, boop. Okay. I feel good about that. I definitely. I think I'm getting to the point. I think I'm getting to the point where some of my plants that are in my um, propagation tray. Actually, you know what? Let's lift you up for this. Oh no, my hair has come loose. Um, some of the plants that are in my propagation tray are getting to the size where I think I want to pull them out of there. Um, I actually put one of my new lids on that has the little vent. Um, just to try and put a little bit more, or I guess less humidity in there, let get a little more airflow. Um, so that when I pull them out of there, I don't like lose them. Um, I guess these guys could also. The thing that I like about these is because they're like they're compact because there's like the four of them. But then when I, I can upgrade them to these and it's basically the same size pot, it's just deeper. So I think that'll end up working really well. But um, I don't know, do I wanna repot these? I mean, I'm, I'm doing repotting now, I might as well. My water has gone over there. Ah! That's a Benny Toji belief. I must have knocked it against something and pulled it off. Poop. It was a good one, too. Nice and pink. All right. It happens, right? All right. Um, um, okay, these are actually in my spag moss soil, but they're they're begonias, so I'm going to go ahead and stick them into here. I think I might just... 
I don't know. I'm curious to see if this is the exact right size. All right. How do I pull you out of there? Because that is very, very not... Okay. Chopstick! Oh, you guys can't even see. Okay. This is what I love about my soil and hate about my soil. <laughs> is that, um... It doesn't compact. <laughs> Because, you know, part of, part of the point of it is that it is good soil and doesn't compact. And that also means that when I try and pull it out and repot stuff, the soil usually goes everywhere. <laughs> Which is perfectly fine. Okay, yeah, no, that's just basically going to go straight in. I just put some soil into the bottom and then just set this guy right on top, so... Oh, I feel like that needs to be a little deeper. Interesting. Because I have, this one grew out of a stem. And the stem is just sitting on top of the soil. Like, the basically, the entire plant is just sitting on top of the soil. And the roots are going down into the soil. Um, but it means that the plant isn't very firmly anchored in there. Yeah, I feel like the, the solution for that would be to just plant it deeper and then put a little bit of soil over top of it. Um, okay, so we're gonna do that just a little deeper. We don't wanna, we don't wanna make it too deep, obviously, because it's used to being kind of on the surface, but I also want it to... Okay, there, that ended up working. I didn't put it that much deeper. It's just now I'm actually covering it a little bit um, and I'm really not worried about the I didn't move the camera down so you guys saw none of that um, and it's a taconite so I'm not really worried about it um, having a connection and dying these plants these taconites man are pretty uh, they're pretty tough. They just kind of, they keep going. They keep going and going. Uh, all right. So you've been watered. You can go over in there now. Now we'll water you. Just a bit. Okay. All right, and now we're going to do the same with this Deco Daddy, which actually is big enough. I have a lady who's been really interested. She's in my area, so she lives, like, in Blacksburg. And she's been really interested in any begonias that I can give her because she really loves begonias, and she's like, we just can't find them around here. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Um, most of the begonias I have are um, from elsewhere. Um, I got, I got the Begonia Breakdance in, um, Roanoke, which is, you know, not too far away. Far enough away that it's not a trip that I make super often, but, um, oh, that's looking so good. That is looking so good. Okay. Um, it's not a trip that I make super often, but it's close enough that it's not like, an amazing journey. You know, it's not like going to Richmond or um, something like that. So, but that's the only begonia that I've gotten in this area. That's not true. I also got the $3 begonia, but we all know that the $3 begonia has been nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. I love that plant. I don't know why I love that plant so much. Ugh, ridiculous. Anyway. Okay, that is looking really, really nice. Okay, so now these guys are in more grown-up pots. My other Deco Daddy, I'm having a little problem with it. I think it might actually be too close to the light, which is odd because it's really not close to the light at all. Um, but the, the leaves are starting to look like, get what looks like light damage, um, which is 
generally a crisping or a browning, but on like a lot of the crisping, like from underwatering or humidity, it's on the, the edges of the leaves because that's the part of the leaf that's the most like susceptible to that. Like the, either the minerals are setting in there or the humidity is getting on the edges of it or that's the part of the leaf that dies off because it's the farthest away from the water source. Um, but light damage tends to be on the highest leaves, obviously, because they're the closest to the light, or um, on the highest parts of the leaf. So, like, because the edges of the leaf are generally lower, you're getting it, like, on these parts. Oh, you can't see it. I'm pointing. You would generally get it on these raised parts here, like this, the parts that are here. Obviously, this guy would get it first because he's the tallest. Um, but I guess I can just show you. Come here, buddy. Um, and it's not really bad yet, which I'm, I'm happy about. Oh, I just watered this and now it's dripping everywhere. That's fine. We're gonna trade you for you so I don't get water everywhere. Where's the best example? Well, I mean, it's on the, the top leaves, but um, so along, along this ridge here and up on here, on these higher leaves. It's, like I said, it's very, very minimal right now. It's really, really hard to see, which is good because it means I haven't, you know, I'm not destroying the plant, but this is definitely like not anywhere near a light. Like it's pretty far away, so I'm not exactly sure why it's having that problem. You are perfectly good soil. I'm gonna have to put you back in the other container. Look at all the repotting I did today. This is kind of cool. All right, now, I, now I'm feeling good about this. What else do I have to repot? I really, I have a bunch of these primulinas. Um, these need to be repotted and I want to split them when I do. Um, these little babies though, I want to repot. These and these. I don't know, I didn't look up how um, whether or not these like to be root bound or not. Do African violets like to be root bound? I don't know. Hmm. I've made like this really big mess here. I probably should just clean everything up, but. All right, um, I think I might end up holding off on these right now. Um, just because of how long I've already been filming. And I think there's some other of my primulinas that I want to, um, I'm gonna move you back up. Um, I think there's some other of my primulinas that I want to repot. Like, don't fall over when I'm grabbing you. Like this guy where there's just a whole bunch of different plants in there. And I kind of want to separate them out because I really like the look of, you know, the one plant that just kind of spreads out. Um, oh, yep. These, these have all started flowering. I had the two that were flowering and now you can see that little flower stalk. They, they come out really weird and curled like that because they have to like get out from underneath the leaves. It's really actually kind of funny to watch them. That would, that might be an interesting um, time lapse. Though they don't grow very fast at all, so I don't know whether or not I'd be able to. You, ah. And I look down and there's mealybugs all over this plant. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take care of that. Stupid notebook, stupid notebook. Um. <laughs> anyway, plant pests are just a part of owning plants. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I've been, I think I've been very lucky in the plant pest regard. I haven't really had that much trouble with them. I get some mealies every once in a while. I get some spider mites every once in a while, but for the most part, I see my plants often enough that it never really gets bad. It's not like those, I see these pictures on um, Facebook where people like post a picture of their plant and they're like, what's wrong with my plant? And it's like covered in scale or it's like covered, you know, like all the white of the mealies. And I'm just like, you know, like, just because they don't know, you know, they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know whether it's anything odd. Um, and so they just, uh, it's such a shame. Um, but anyway, it's not a bad infestation. I'm not even sure that I could show it to you if I moved it closer because there's a tail and there's not that many of them yet. So, um, but like I said, I've been fighting mealies on a lot of my primulinas. So I'm just going to have to kind of, I'm just going to have to kind of. Anyway, lots of repotting today. Super excited about the repotting. Um, and that was just, that was a lot of fun. I, I really like these pots. Um, as much as I say that I don't really care, because I keep a lot of my pots, I mean, you guys know this, I keep a lot of my pots in just nursery pots. Um, because I don't want to have to spend money on pots. I mean, that's, that's part of it. Why would I buy a pot when I could buy another plant? But now I'm definitely getting to the point where I'm like, I really don't want more plants at this point because the amount of time that it's taking me to um, care for all the plants that I have is, it's definitely not an untenable at this point, but it's getting to the point where I'm being annoyed by it. Um, where I'm like, Okay, now I have to go and water again. Um, and I don't want my plant life to be like that. I want to be able to just go and enjoy my plants and like, you know, take care of them and whatever. So it might not be a bad idea for me to focus for a little while on um, <clears throat> just getting some nice pots for some of the plants that I have that are um, like my plant plants because like these guys here these are propagations that I'm eventually going to give away or sell um, but the plants that are the plants that I'm keeping um, getting some nice pots for them might not be a bad thing because then it's something that I can do without having to um, get more plants the pots themselves don't need to be taken care of <laughs> the pots just sit there <laughs> I love that. The pots just sit there. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me in my sudden... I just totally went off topic. I was all like, oh, I'm potting, I'm potting. Oh my God, mealies. Um, anyway, so thank you for hanging around. And me gesticulating with this chopstick that I just picked up and now I'm like... You're a wizard, Harry. Hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me today. You guys are great. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and like this video. Um, let me know what you think of my new pots and the plants that I put in my new pots. Um, and do you have any? Do you have any suggestions for mealies? Go ahead and take them. I mean, I use the isopropyl alcohol and I wipe them off and I spray the leaves. But if you guys have any other, any other suggestions for those, just let me know because there might be a better way to do it. There might be um, the 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 difficulty with mealies is when you have really densely packed um, plants and then you can't get all the little crevices. Like man, it was a pain in the butt to get them off of my um, Hoya Carnosa compacta. That, that took forever. I, I'm pretty sure that I got it, but I think my Crimson Queen, or my Crimson Princess has them now too. So anyway, if you have any suggestions for me, Elise, I will take them. I will be very appreciative of it. Um, if you want to stick around and see more pots and more battles with mealies, <laughs> go ahead and subscribe so you can stick around. 
Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.